So the acronym COPE is the prescription for building and gaining confidence. So once you're able to master this acronym of COPE and implement it as a life strategy, that will enable you to override your fear and focus on achieving your desires. So what do you think of when you think of COPE? I mean, I used to think it was a milk toast word. And COPE had a sense of maybe just getting by. But when I started looking at how Webster defined the word COPE, I realized this is really what we're doing. So let's go to Webster and see how they define COPE. So Webster defines COPE as to contend with difficulties and act to overcome them. So the idea of cope is just not squeaking by, but actually working through your gaps and acting in such a way as to overcome or override your fears and achieve your desires. So the C in the acronym COPE is about control your thoughts. And you say, oh, come on, Marty, give me something more original than that. I've heard that all of my life. Well, let me ask you a question. How good are you at that? How good are you at controlling your thoughts rather than allowing, as you're trying to work toward your desires, the fears start coming in and they start saying, look at me, look at me. And instead of thinking about your thoughts as it relates to your desire, you're thinking about those paper tigers of fear. Well, let me tell you what I found out when I was doing all of my research for this, and it surprised me. I found out that very few people in this world, of course, I'm speaking of adults, very few people truly, truly noted exactly what they wanted in life. They really didn't have very many desires. But you know what? Everybody knows what they don't want. So if you're living your life, if I may speak candidly to you, where you're living your life by not what you want, but by what you don't want, you're living life by default. You're living life by what it gives you. I mean, living life by what you don't want. Nobody wants to not have good health. Nobody wants to die poor. Nobody wants their kid to have issues in school. I mean, there's several things we can define our life by what we don't want. But living confidently and being dominant in confidence in our mind allows us to go for our desires. And the art of learning how to control your th thoughts simply starts with understanding how well you believe in your abilities and your desires. There was an interesting study that actually was three separate studies around the world. No one of the universities knew that the other one was doing the study. And it did this. It measured the random thoughts between CEOs and professional athletes and the rest of us adults. So guess what? You and I, if I put us in category of rest of the adults, have somewhere in the neighborhood of about 3,500 random thoughts a day. Now, by random, what I mean is that you may be listening to this and all of a sudden you think, have I gone to the cleaners today? Or what am I going to have to eat tonight? Or I wonder if there's a movie I'd like to go see. Just a random thought and then you go right back to what you were focusing on. 3,500 times a day, you and I have these random thoughts. Compare that to the professional athlete or the CEO it's almost a full fourth of what you and I have. They only have 1,100 random thoughts a day. And think about that. They have to be so focused on their desire. They're so lasered in. They don't have time for radical thoughts coming in. And they stay on exactly what it is that they're desiring. So think of it this way. Do you think when LeBron James goes up and grabs a rebound, and he's coming back down and getting ready to dribble the floor to try to go for a layup. While he's dribbling down the court, do you think he's going, hmm, I wonder what I'm going to have for dinner tonight after the game? 
No, he's not thinking that. What is he thinking? He's looking at his other four teammates. He's seeing the other five defensive guys, and he's figuring out what's going to happen. He is right there and focused. And when you fall in love with your desire and you believe, you can start controlling your thoughts. You know, if you have a plot of land that's by your house or by your building, and it's a flower bed, let's say, or has bushes there, and you tend to it so that it doesn't have weeds. And over a period of years, it looks to be very beautiful. And you enjoy that plot. But let's say that for whatever reason you sell it or you no longer take care of it. Well, the next couple of years, what's going to happen? Weeds are going to be growing, and it's not going to be pretty. Now, don't miss the point of the story here. It's not that it's pretty or it's weeds. The point is, is that land, that, that little bit of plot of land is growing something. Likewise, you are going to be thinking something all the time. Why wouldn't you want your thoughts to be thinking about what it is that you desire rather than what you don't want to have in your life? That's what it's all about. Control your thoughts, and when you can't, it's because your desire hasn't become strong enough and you need to work on your belief and your abilities.